In this video, I will talk about how to do uh, linear regression using SAS. So uh, this is a uh, hands-on session. <coughs> so uh, I'll be using the SAS window to perform all the steps, uh, you know, involved in the uh, linear regression. Um, <coughs> for this particular, uh, you know, session, I have taken data from SAS help. With the cars data, you can check it in your SAS when uh, you know SAS software. You can find it in SAS help. Um, again, uh, SAS help is a place where you can uh, find uh, a lot of software. So, how do you go to SAS help? So, this is the SAS help. You can get a lot of test data from here. So, I have taken it uh, from uh, SAS help, and uh, it's there in my work library. Uh, and then from <coughs> the data cars, I am taking two variables. Uh, one is mileage, and the other one is uh, weight. Okay. So, uh, what is the idea here? So, I, I want to know um, how mileage mileage of a vehicle uh, is uh, dependent on its weight, or how uh, you know mileage is uh, getting uh, impacted by the weight of the vehicle okay so that's the problem statement in front of us and then uh, we'll just see uh, you know what is the relationship between them mileage and weight uh, so uh, we'll, we'll straight away go to uh, you know the modeling exercises Be uh, few things before uh, you know going into the modeling exercises uh, is that in, in, in regression, in linear regression, your uh, dependent variable uh, should be continuous in nature. Okay. So it cannot be a categorical or binary, that kind of a thing. Uh, otherwise, it actually uh, violates the assumptions of linear regression. So uh, make sure that your dependent variable is continuous in nature. Okay, so uh, mileage is a continuous variable, so uh, we have no issue here. Now, uh, before doing any modeling exercise, uh, make sure that you look at the data first, and then you know do the uh, basic, uh, uh, you know, the exploration on the data. Uh, it will give you some idea, right? So first thing we will do with that, we'll just see the data, how it looks. So we'll do a proc print data cars data. As you can see, <coughs> we have uh, mileage and then uh, weight. Okay. So uh, how many observations do we have? We have four twenty-eight observations. So let's do a proc means well since the uh, intention of this video is not to talk about uh, the uh, you know the uh, exploratory data analysis so I'll uh, limit it to only few things of course you can do uh, exploration uh, you know in detail manner but I'll keep it to only the basic things like proc means and proc univariate. I will not go into detail uh, like you know other things like you know there are a lot of data exp uh, exploratory thing you can uh, try out. Uh, so if I run proc means, so uh, I have the mean, standard deviation, minimum, and the uh, maximum. Okay. Well, uh, <coughs> looking at the data, it looks uh, quite fine. Um, <coughs> you know, uh, it's a test data. Uh, it, it's already there in SAS, so you know you, you expect it to be you know very well. Uh, there, there shouldn't be uh, any error in the data, but in real data, probably you know sometime we will find a maximum value or minimum value, which is uh, quite. Uh, you know, susceptible. I mean, you can you can just uh, uh, think about. You, you have to like you know check it uh, whether whether the data is correct or not. 
sometimes you know the maximum value like could be very different from the you know the average value in that case uh, it's it's very uh, suspicious right <coughs> So I'll see uh, how many missing values are there. So let's just uh, use nmiss for that. Okay. Uh, so no missing value. Good. Okay. Um, I'll do a block univariate data. So uh, you know, in in proc univariate, univariate you can uh, get uh, you know a lot of uh, uh, statistic, quantile distribution, extreme observation, and then you can always look at uh, this and see whether your data has outliers or not. The best thing is to see the uh, extreme observations, you know. Uh, but it looks very fine here. You know, sometimes uh, you know there could be there could be some erroneous data, and you will have uh, you'll have to check it out. Mm. <coughs> we can plot a histogram. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, it looks like uh, it, it's uh, distributed normally. It looks like a normal plot, right? So it's near normal. Let's see whether what happens to the other variable mileage. Yeah, this is uh, there is some deviation from the normality, but still we can we can take it as uh, normal. You know, it it in increases then decreases, so you know it's okay. Of course, we can go in for normality check uh, if we 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 think this is a strict criteria. Uh, well, if it's near normal, it's okay. But you can always see because you know this is always good that you know the continuous variable in regression are normally distributed. Okay, so if a continuous uh, variables are normally distributed, uh, automatically your errors will be normally distributed, and this uh, errors uh, being normally distributed uh, is a strict criteria in regression. So it is always good to check your variables, continuous variables in regression, whether the variables are uh, normally distributed or not. <coughs> Okay, um, so let's do a correlation. Let's just see how are they correlated. Data, cost, data. Okay, uh, so the correlation is minus 0.7. That means they are inversely uh, related. Okay, so you know we, we can also expect a negative coefficient or negative relation in the regression. Uh, so let's just see what are we getting there. So <coughs> we use PROC rate for regression. So the syntax is like this: proc rate data, then they give a data set. 
class underscore data and then you write your model state so which one is your dependent variable so we want to see uh, how mileage is getting affected by the uh, the uh, weight of the car right so mileage is our dependent variable so that's the variable of interest so mpg underscore city is our dependent variable so we need to write our dependent variable first and then put your independent variable so what is your independent variable weight so this is the simplest form of regression you can always use lot more options you can always explore so uh, when we run this <coughs> so uh, so this is the output see uh, and we will we'll go one by one a uh, couple of things may not be very necessary so i won't go into the detail so whatever is important to us uh, i'll just talk about uh, about it so uh, total number of observations at the very beginning and then uh, you know there are a couple of things couple of statistics we need to take a look at uh, as i have uh, already uh, you know uh, mentioned in in one of our uh, video on linear regression that uh, what we mostly care about in regression is what is the r square value okay uh, so what is the r square value here so the r square value is 0.544 so uh, there is something also uh, known as adjusted r square uh, well the adjusted r square is not uh, very important in linear regression but it is very important in multiple regression okay so we'll talk about that in uh, multiple regression video uh, it's it's very similar to r square uh, just that it penalizes you if you use too many independent variables so that's the uh, uh, that's the uh, thing about uh, adjusted r square so uh, for now we'll just see uh, what is our r square value it is 0.54 so what does that mean that means 50% 54% of the variation in your dependent variable which is the mileage is being explained by the variation in the weight so the so, so you are saying that you know 54% of the variation or change in the mileage is correctly explained by variation in the weight 50% 4% is not very bad so uh, of course mileage de depends on many other factors if you keep on adding other factors like other variables you can't do that in linear regression uh, because linear regression has only one variable okay so in fact i should have told this in the very beginning that uh, linear regression has only uh, one variable so uh, <coughs> in multiple regression of course we can add uh, many more variables and the r square will go up uh, uh, after that um, <coughs> so the second important thing is the parameter estimates so we have we'll have two parameters here one is your intercept and the other one is your, uh, the slope coefficient our intercept value is 38.28 uh, so when we uh, you know look at the parameter estimates the uh, uh, one thing that we actually uh, check is what is the t statistics okay so t, t statistics tells us whether this uh, estimate is significant or not so at 95% uh, confidence level it has to be greater than 1.96 uh, and and we can see that it's greater than you know uh, greater than 1.96 so uh, it it's significant okay uh, <coughs> Similarly, the uh, slope coefficient takes a value of 0 0.00509, okay, and that's negative. Uh, so uh, first, we need to see whether it's it's significant or not. Yes, it is significant because t value is uh, you know less than minus 1.96. So it either it has to be greater than 1.96 or less than uh, minus 1.96. So at 95% confidence level, it is significant okay so only when 
uh, the estimates are significant, we can yield a bet. If the estimates were insignificant, if that they wouldn't have been, uh, you know, more than um, 1.96, then uh, we cannot uh, explain them. Okay. So, uh, you know, if we are not very strict about it, at 90% level also we can explain them. So, uh, at 90% uh, confidence level, uh, it has to be uh, at least 1.64. Okay. So, uh, what is p-value? So, p-value is, is nothing but, uh, it is, you know, more or less same, it is entirely in a different way of interpreting the significance. Uh, but very much similar to your t-statistics. So your p-value has to be uh, less than 0 0.05 uh, for the intercept to be uh, significant and in both the cases we can see that uh, it's less than 0 0.05. Okay. So uh, both intercept and slope coefficients are significant here. Okay. So we can interpret that. So how do we interpret it? Okay. So uh, <coughs> We, we say that it doesn't really matter what the weight is, the mile is, is has some you know value irrespective of the weight. Okay, so that's how, what is the mile is? It's 38.28. So that's how we interpret intercept. How do we interpret weight? Every one unit increase in the weight of the vehicle decreases the mile is by 0 .005, uh, unit. I repeat, every one unit increase in the weight of the vehicle decreases the mileage of the vehicle by 0 0.00509. So that's how we interpret the slope coefficient. Yeah. So what will be our regression equation? So our regression equation will be like this. Mileage is equal to 38 point, so what was that, uh, 38 point uh, 2 and point zero zero five, right, um, 38.2 minus point zero zero five into weight. So, uh, so this is our uh, regression, final regression equation, okay. So this is a linear regression. You can plot it also. You can plot it uh, in a graph, and it will be straight line. Okay, you can plot it against uh, against your data points also. Okay, so we can do that in SAS also. So let's do that here. So I'll just write plot. So, uh, using plot, you can plot your dependent uh, with the independent variable and just take a look at it, how it uh, looks like. So, uh, this is how your regression like, uh, you, know, uh, you know, looks like. So, uh, <coughs> as you can see, your regression equation is written at the top. Your mileage is 32.28 minus uh, 0 0.0051 into weight. So this regression line is being plotted here. Okay, and your data points are here and there. So we generalize the pattern or the relation between mileage and weight by you know plotting this regression line. Okay, and uh, as you can see, it passes through the middle of the data points. Well, there are so many data points who are lying uh, at the extreme, like these are the data points, we can actually remove them so that the model will perform better. So, you know, that's where the exploratory data analysis play a very, uh, uh, very uh, important role. So, you can just, you know, look at this data and then remove these data points and again run the regression. In that way, we can improve the R square and make our model better. It can predict better. It can it, it can perform better. Okay. Um, so we can also see the uh, 
the confidence level like the regression uh, you know uh, in, in a regression line it can fluctuate a bit so under uh, under uh, the uh, uh, hypothesis testing uh, we know that you know <coughs> A statistical estimation can fluctuate uh, with some confidence level. So at 95 confidence level, let's see how a regression line fluctuates. So uh, for that, you just uh, use the uh, PRAID uh, option and uh, we'll have the confidence level as well. So these are the uh, the upper one and the lower one at the confidence level uh, regression lines. So uh, what it means is that our regression line, which is a red one, can either uh, go up to the uh, the upper regression line or can go down to this line. So it says that 95% of the time our regression line will lie between the lower uh, confidence regression line and the upper confidence regression line. And what is the confidence level? That is like 95%. Like you try it for 100 times, 95 mm, mm, times, at least 95 times, you will end up having a regression line in between these, uh, you know, two lines. So that's the, uh, you know, idea. Uh, how does it really help? You know, when we uh, uh, present our, uh, our results to a layman, non-statistician, uh, we can, you know, give surety because, you know, models can go wrong. So we just tell them, okay, you know, this is our confidence level. Uh, you know, it can be go up to this value or go down to this value. So we give a uh, upper limit and the lower limit. Okay, so that that's how it works. Another important thing in regression is to plot the error, right? So uh, we need to ensure that error doesn't follow any pattern, and then. Uh, the sum of the errors should be, uh, you know, the uh, sum of these errors should be uh, um, close to zero. So how do we do that? We plot residual dot predicted. Now, when you run this, you have the plot of the residual against the your predicted value yeah so your residual is in the y-axis and your predicted value predicted minus value using the uh, regression equation okay not the actual value the predicted mileage okay So as you can see, your error values are lying both in the upper side as well as the lower side. So the, most of the cases it will be cancelling out and your error will be very close to zero or a very small number. Okay. But there are cases uh, which are uh, which can be considered as outliers like this point, this point. So these are the points or these are the data points uh, which can be uh, problematic to us. But there are very few. We can always remove them uh, so that our model will be uh, performing better and uh, none of the assumption will be violated. So, uh, <coughs> so when we present uh, our results, so we present uh, three things, you know, mostly there could be many other things. First, we will present our exploratory data analysis, exploring the uh, different variables, different, you know, their characteristics and then remove the outliers all that and the second thing is uh, that we, we actually present is is the uh, in the uh, parameter estimates um, and, and the third thing that we actually present is uh, the different plots like uh, the uh, plot uh, the you know the uh, residual plot and the regression line plot with confidence uh, levels so these are the results that we actually present uh, to to the uh, um, <coughs> you know as uh, when we complete our research or uh, you know we are presenting it to the um, uh, business. Okay, so that's all in the uh, video. Um, <coughs> in the next video, we'll uh, see uh, how do we do uh, multiple regressions. So that's going to be like you know adding a couple of more uh, variables. So multiple regression is nothing but 
having more than one independent variable but that's not easy you know you, you can face a lot of uh, problems when you keep on adding variables okay so we'll see what are problems we, we face uh, in multiple regression uh, how to handle them and uh, how to perform multiple regressions uh, in the next video